In today's video, we're going to go over eight different example problems for rotational mechanics. And before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that really a lot of people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe. Support my channel. Click the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment and share this video. And also, I've made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find my Teacher by Teacher website. Whether you're looking for notes for a bunch of different topics, whether you're looking for some stuff that you can do with uh, PGT simulations, whether you're looking for example problems, practice problems with all of the solutions, it's all available at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. Let's get started. I've also made some other videos for rotational mechanics, which you can link to in the upper right hand corner of this video. Now before we start, I just want to say that it's a good idea since you've probably already done linear mechanics or just kind of regular mechanics, that if you think about that, you can then translate that information over to what you need to know for rotational mechanics. Because really, the terms for linear mechanics, we have the initial and the final velocity, we have the acceleration, the change in the position or the displacement and the time. There are similar terms, analogous terms, really for rotational mechanics. We have the angular velocity, the initial and the final. This is omega. This is the symbol for the angular velocity. We have alpha, which is the angular acceleration. We have the change in theta, which is the angular displacement, and we have time. And those things are really the same kind of thing, except we're just talking about going around in a circle instead of going in a straight line. But the velocities can change. There's acceleration, and there's angular displacement, and there's time. Also, you'll notice the equations are very much the same. This is the equation we use for velocity when we do not have acceleration. Constant. When there's no acceleration, we have the velocity is just the distance divided by time. When there's no acceleration, then the angular velocity is just the change in the angle over the time, or the angular displacement over time. These other four equations are the equations we use when we have constant uniform acceleration. And you can see wherever there's a velocity, we just put in an angular velocity, omega. Wherever there's an acceleration, we just put in the angular acceleration symbol uh, alpha. And wherever there is a displacement, we can have x or y or z over here. We have angular displacement, which is the change in the angle delta theta. Otherwise, it's really all just the same thing. You just have to get used to it and think about it and kind of get yourself oriented when we talk about rotational mechanics as opposed to linear or just kind of, as I said, regular old mechanics. All right? Then we also have the equations that we can use that we use to relate our linear motion to our rotational motion. So these are the equations. Now it might be a good idea before we start is just write all those equations down. Write down the four or five equations that we're going to use for translational motion, excuse me, for rotational motion, and then write these down and have them next to you because you're going to be able to need to use them. And there's two other equations you should be aware of. That's that the angular velocity is equal to two times pi times the frequency, the number of times it goes around in a second. And because frequency and period are inversely proportional, the angular velocity is also equal to 2 times pi divided by t, the period. Okay? Okay. Let's get started. Number one. Now we're going to start off with some basic stuff, and then we'll build up. Uh, you should be able to convert between rotations and radians and radians and rotations. And so uh, it says here a car tire rotates 7.5 revolutions. It means it goes around 7.5 times. How many radians is that? Well... You should keep this in mind that one revolution, one time around a circle is 360 degrees, which is equal to 2 pi radians, and that's equal to 6.2 radians. Okay, usually we write 2 pi radians, we don't really write 6.2 radians, but that's a way you can convert also. Okay, we want to convert from revolutions to radians, so I'm going to write down revolutions, and then I put this little uh, grid down like this, and I need to get my conversion factor out here. I want to put revolutions on the bottom and radians on the top. My revolutions will cancel. I multiply across, and that's 15 pi radians, or 47 radians. It's just 15 times 3.2 or 15, 3.14 or pi. Okay? Okay. Now we can go the other way. We have 95 radians at 95. 950 radians, we put that down. Now we're just going to use the same conversion factor. We're just going to put the radians in the bottom so that they'll cancel, and the revolutions on the top, and that is 151 revolutions. Okay, it's good to be able to convert back and forth because kind of in all in, in, in everyday speak we don't say re radians we say revolutions or rotations or something or a number of degrees but we have to convert into radians when we use the equations. Okay, this says a bicycle wheel spins with a constant velocity. So this you want to note here it says constant velocity, no acceleration, constant velocity. 
the radius of the wheel is 65 centimeters. We want to know how many revolutions does the wheel go through in seven minutes and how fast is the actual bicycle going. Okay, so for letter A, we're just going to use our equation for our angular velocity uh, without acceleration. And angular velocity is just the change in the angle over the change in the time. And we want to know, you can see here it says angular displacement, but here it says revolution. Well, those things are directly related to each other the number of revolutions and the angular displacement. So we're going to find first the angular displacement in radians, okay? And we're going to get from that, that 50, it's 15 times 420 seconds, because 7 minutes is 420 seconds, and we said the velocity was 15 radians per second, and we get 6,300 radians. That's the number of radians. Now the revolutions, as we talked about before, we can just convert from 6,300 radians, into our revolutions, and that's 1,003 revolutions. Okay, now we want to know how fast is the bicycle going, because it's going basically at this speed uh, and for that amount of time. And so for letter B, okay, we're going to use, we want to find the velocity, right? There's no acceleration, so it's the velocity is distance divided by time. We know the time, it's 7 minutes or 420 seconds, but we don't know the distance, how far it goes. Well, this is the equation that relates the angular displacement to the distance, okay? When we write this equation, we often put D here. When we write this equation, we put S, but this S and this D are the same thing. They're the distance. This is like the arc length when we're talking about circles, and this is the distance when we're talking about velocity, and we plug those values in. The radius is 65 centimeters, which is 0 0.65 meters, times the change in the angle in radians, okay? We have to always put the, when we're using these equations, put the angle in in radians and that's the angular displacement, and we come up with 4,095 meters. That's how far, okay, when we have this velocity for this amount of time, this is how far you go. Now we've got to figure out the actual linear velocity, okay? And that's the distance divided by the time, and you get that the bicycle is going 9.75 meters per second, all right? That kind of combines those two equations, and that is example number two. For example number three, we have an object that rotates. Now, we want to be able to convert between revolutions per minute, because then also we talk about revolutions per minute, not just revolutions, and we want to know it's the angular velocity. So we have 3,700 revolutions per minute. Well, the angular velocity has to be in radians per second, so we've got to convert revolutions to radians and minutes to seconds. I think I'm going to do the seconds first, get that out of the way, you see the minutes cancel. And now I have my answer in revolutions per second, but I got to convert revolution, this many revolutions, into radians. So I'm, I know that one revolution is two pi radians. And so now I'm just going to multiply 3700 times two pi divided by 60, and I will get that that is 387 Revol excuse me, radians per second, all right? That number of revolutions per minute equals that number of radians per second. All right, now, the next one it says here, what's the angular acceleration? Now we're going to get into acceleration because we're going to say it's, coming, it's starting at this velocity, this angular velocity, and it's going to come to rest in six seconds. So this is the equation that we can use because we know that the acceleration, the angular acceleration, is simply the change in the angular velocity divided by time. Just like for linear acceleration, it's the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity, but this is the change in angular velocity. And with coming to rest, so we know the final velocity is going to be zero, so then it's just going to be minus the initial angular velocity divided by the time in seconds. Okay, because we gave the answer, they gave the time in seconds, we just divide by six seconds, and you can see you get that it's minus 64.5 radians per second squared. It's minus because it's slowing down, okay? Minus because it's slowing down. That comes from it's always final minus initial. Okay, that's number three. We're almost halfway. Now we have a merry-go-round. It has a, it's initially at rest, and now it's given an angular velocity, excuse me, an angular acceleration of 0 0.055 radians per second, and of course this should say radians per second squared. I left that off, and then it's for 12 seconds. And we want to determine all of these things, the angular velocity of the merry-go-round after, uh, after the 12 seconds, the linear velocity that a child would have that's 
2.75 meters from the center of the merry-go-round and the tangential acceleration or the linear acceleration of that child also. Okay, so of course we'll start off by writing down what we know. We know the initial velo angular velocity is zero, the final is what we want to find out, and then we have the acceleration and we have the time. And if you look at your kinematic equations for rotational motion, you can see that you can use this equation. This is basically the equation for the acceleration solved for uh, the final velocity. Okay, I believe this is the first one on the list. And we want to solve for the final. We know the initial is zero, so then it just becomes the angular acceleration times the time. And just like with linear acceleration, you have the acceleration times the time. It's increasing its speed by so much, uh, uh, its angular velocity by so much every second. It does that for 12 seconds. And the final angular velocity is going to be 0.66 radians per second. So that's A. Now we want to know the linear velocity. So we have an equation that relates the angular velocity to the linear velocity, which is multiplied by r. This is that equation, of course. So we take 2.75 times 0 0.66 radians per second, and you get that that is going to be 1.82 meters per second. All right. You'll notice that the relationship is directly proportional to the radius. The farther you are from the point of rotation, the greater your velocity is going to be, even though you would have the same angular velocity. Okay, interesting. All right, for letter C, we're going to find the 10. Now, this is the linear acceleration, tangential acceleration, basically the same kind of thing. You just multiply the, uh, the angular acceleration times the radius, and you get that the, uh, the tangential or the linear acceleration is 0.5. 151 one meters per second squared. Okay, we're halfway there. Let's start with number five. Now we have a motor that has a radius of 12 centimeters and it rotates at a rate of 900 revolutions per minute. We want to know the following for the motor, the frequency, the period, the angular velocity, the linear velocity, and the centripetal acceleration. So the revolutions per minute, we can get the frequency from that. We just know that's revolutions per minute. That's, we want to know revolutions per second, basically. So we're just going to convert that into seconds. We know that one minute is 60 seconds, and that means it's 15 revolutions per second. All right, and that is basically, that is the frequency. It's just 15 hertz, okay? Hertz is cycles per second, or revolution in this case per second. For letter B, we know that the period and the frequency are inversely proportional. So to get the period, the amount of time it takes for one revolution, we just divide by the hertz, and of course, this should be a capital H, and we get 0 0.067 seconds is the period. And for C, we want the angular velocity, okay? We can get the angular velocity, as I showed you in the beginning, if we know the frequency, and you just get 2 times pi times 15, which is 94 radians per second. Okay, that's the angular velocity, that's the number of radians per second. Okay, for D, the linear velocity, now we have done this already, it's just the linear velocity is V, or the linear speed, it's just R times omega, the angular velocity, you just take that 0 0.12, 12 centimeters is 0 0.12 meters, multiply by 94, and you get 11.3 meters per second, and the centripetal acceleration, we just have to do the same thing, except we have to square the angular velocity, and you get that it's 1,060 meters per second, okay? That's pretty high. That's a high uh, ex uh, centripetal acceleration. In a previous video, which you can link to, I showed you how we derived some of these equations, so you can see that in the upper right-hand corner. This video, number six, is now over a period of 15 seconds, a flywheel accelerates from rest at a rate of uh, 2.7 radians per second squared, and we want to know what is the final angular velocity of the disk and how many revolutions does it go through. Okay, so for the final angular velocity, first we're going to write down the things we know. And we want to get the final angular velocity. This is the equation we'll use. Again, the initial velocity is zero. And then we multiply those and we get that the final velocity is 41 radians per second. Now you want to know how many revolutions Okay, it's going to go through. That's, we have first have to find the angular displacement. Okay, so we're going to get the angular displacement. We're going to use this equation. Now, there's another equation we could use because now we know the, um, excuse me, now we know the final velocity, but we're going to use this equation. 
And it says that the angular velocity is the in initial velocity times time, one half alpha t squared. Okay? And with the initial velocity is zero again, so we have one half alpha t squared, alpha being the angular acceleration, and that is just one half times 2.7 times 15 squared. You've got to remember to square the 15. Okay? And then you get that that's 340, 304 radians. That is the number of radians. Now, this says the number of revolutions, okay? And so we got to convert the radians into revolutions. We've done that already. One revolution, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is two pi radians. Cancel, and you get 48 revolutions, okay? Number seven, two more, and then we'll be done. A wheel has a certain diameter, 80 centimeters. It increases its angular velocity from 5 to 25 radians over time of 10 seconds. We want to know what's the angular acceleration. We want to know what's the linear acceleration and how many revolutions that wheel goes through. So once again, uh, we can just use this equation for our angular velocity. It's just the change in the velocity for angular acceleration. It's the change in the velocity over time. Okay, we're given the final and initial, neither of them is zero, but it's 25 minus 5, the final minus the initial, which is 20 divided by 10, and that means that the acceleration is 2 radians per second squared. Okay, there we have the acceleration, and now we want to know what's the linear acceleration. This is the equation which we used already once before to get the linear acceleration, and that's 0 0.8 because that's the radius in meters times the acceleration is 1.6 meters per second squared. And how many revolutions it will go through? Well, we can do that by writing down all the information that we have now. Because we have the initial and the final and the acceleration and the time. And we can use this equation to find the displacement, which is 1 half the sum of the two divided by the time, and let's see, the sum of those two is 30 divided by, multiplied by one half or divided by two is 15 times 10 is going to be 150 radians. Okay, and then we want to convert to revolutions, and then we do the same thing again, and then we get revolutions. Okay, last one. Here we go. A car tire starts from rest and undergoes acceleration of 4 radians per second squared for 5 seconds. The radius of the tire is 40 centimeters. We want to know the angular displacement of the tire and how far it's going to move. So I'm going to write down everything I know so I can figure out which equation. I know the initial velocity is 0, the final angular velocity is 4, the time is 5, and we want to know what is the change in the position, or really the angular displacement. And this is the equation that we can use. Again, the initial velocity is 0, so it's just 1 half the angular acceleration times the time squared. And we put the values in, and you can see that we have 1 half times 4, which is 2, times 5 squared, which is 25. 2 times 25 is the angular displacement, is 50 radians. We don't ask for the revolution. We've done that enough, and we want to know how far the car is going to move. Okay, and this is the equation that relates that, because this is S is that is the arc length, and the arc length, because the tire is rolling on the ground, is the distance that it's going to travel, and we know that that is 0.4, because that's the radius, and 0.4 meters, and the angular displacement is 50 radians, and therefore, when you're 0.4 meters away from the center, and you go through 50 radians, that's 20 meters. You can see that even though the number of radians would stay the same, the farther away you are from the center, the greater the distance would be, and of course, the closer you are, the lower the distance would be. Okay, so I think that just about covers everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following five things. Subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should please uh, click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment. Share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.